Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and this is our sun being shredded by a tiny black hole somewhere right here. In today's video I wanted to actually talk about this very interesting phenomenon and actually tell you about the so-called spitballs. These are the particles that you see orbiting around the black hole right now. Anyway, today you're going to learn something new and welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So in 2017, there was actually a very interesting publication about the so-called spitballs. These particles that you see being sort of shredded um, from the star and spit out by the black hole. What these scientists discovered is that there's actually quite a lot of these particles that are formed in our galaxy and are being tossed around um, even in the direction of our own solar system. So there's actually quite a high chance that at least one of these particles will one day pass relatively close to our solar system. And so in this video, I wanted to actually give you an idea of what these things are and what they might actually do to our solar system. Long story short, probably nothing, but it's still fun to actually look at all of these beautiful spitball particles. Now we've actually observed the shredding of the star at least several times by now. And when this actually occurs, um, it takes approximately a day for a black hole to completely disintegrate a star. One of the, one of the biggest uh, or one of the brightest supernova we've actually observed was not a supernova at all, but it was actually a very, very, very bright flash caused by um, a star that was shredded by the black hole and was is essentially destroyed by it. Uh, this destroyed star then created millions and billions of these spitballs. These things, however, don't necessarily end up in a black hole. A lot of them get tossed out into the galaxy. Basically, a lot of them end up flying all over the place. So it kind of looks like this. So here's another black hole in the middle of, of a random galaxy, and it's going to basically shred apart a star that I'm about to place here. We're going to place it relatively close. So, and as the star is shredded apart, it releases uh, releases these uh, spitballs, basically releases its own particles. And those particles, if they get to um, get ejected from the black hole, turn into these spitballs that I kind of created here randomly. They're all over the place. Now, what exactly are these spitballs? Let's take a look at one of them uh, that's essentially flying through space right here. Here is uh, one called Diang. Uh, completely randomly generated, but basically it is sort of like a planet. Now it's not necessarily a planet. And it's, uh, for me to explain how these spitballs are created, I need to actually show you um, how this material uh, gets recombined into a planet first. But essentially, once they get ejected, this is what happens. They start flying around all over the galaxy and basically start escaping into the outer parts of the galaxy at the speeds uh, of about eight to 9,000 kilometers per second or about 32 million kilometers per hour. In other words, really, 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 really fast. So first let's actually create one of these completely from scratch by doing the following. We're going to wait for a little bit more parts to get shredded. We're going to stop the simulation, erase the sun here erase the black hole as well. And basically now we're going to stop the velocity and have all of these pieces combine into, uh, into one. So here is how this, the, the material would be actually combining into itself or into something very large. And um, this star material, which for the most part would be either hydrogen or helium, would essentially form these really, really massive gas giants, possibly several times the mass of um, Jupiter. Now, as this material coalesces, which actually takes somewhere around a year, it creates these pseudo planets, these fake planets. And so once all of this combines into something, it will create something that may look like this. Now, this is not a true planet. First of all, it only took about a year to make this. Usually planets take millions of years to develop. And second of all, for the most part, it will only contain pure hydrogen, or pure helium, or something that basically would uh, be inside a star. But it would also be very, very cold. Some of these might even become brown dwarfs, and as you can see, it's still absorbing some of the materials and growing larger. So some of these might even create smaller red dwarfs at some point, if there's enough material. But for the most part, they will just be very, very, very large gas giant-like objects. 
And according to uh, the same scientists, there's about one in about a thousand of rogue planets, so one out of a thousand, is actually a spitball. So if we look around and we find about a thousand different rogue planets in our galaxy, at least one of them has actually been created in this way. Now this unusual object, oh look at that, is actually, it's becoming a brown dwarf, wow, very impressive. I definitely absorbed quite a lot of material. And so anyway, so one of these objects uh, might actually or very likely escape our galaxy at some point and will be flying really, really fast toward other galaxies. Which also implies that um, neighboring galaxies like Andromeda and uh, large and small Magellanic clouds actually throw these at us at all times as well. And it's very possible that if we look hard enough, at some point we might be able to detect one of these objects. Now, if it's a planetary size object, in other words, if it's about a size of like let's just say Jupiter, if it's uh, very uh, massive but not very bright, we might not be able to detect it very easily. But if by some point it's actually a brown dwarf or even a red dwarf, so in other words, if, if it's even a little bit more massive than this, at a mass, mass of about 80 Jupiters, in that case, we might be able to detect uh, these objects. Now, how would we actually know that this is a spitball? Well, for one, it would be moving really fast. It would be moving through a galaxy at an unusually fast speed. And so far, we haven't really found a single one of these. On the other hand, it would also not have any planetary objects around it, so it would actually be very likely just alone by itself with possibly maybe a binary uh, object uh, of about the same size, but very unlikely. It would probably be completely alone. And since, for the most part, this object would be made entirely out of, essentially, leftover star material, let's actually make it a little bit smaller, um, it would be very, very interesting to study this, because it would actually potentially show us what's, uh, or what used to be, inside the stars, and we'll be able to actually uh, measure some of the really, really cool things about these objects, specifically, essentially, how different materials evolve inside the stars. And let's make it maybe a little bit smaller until it cools down a little bit and turns into a more realistic looking speedball, which, is, which would be maybe the size of um, a relatively large gas giant uh, planet. Now, interestingly, we think that about 95% of these objects probably are on the course to escape our galaxy. So in other words, most of these uh, objects will essentially leave our galaxy and fly into the outer uh, intergalactic space. But the chance for at least one of them to hit another galaxy is relatively high, and the chance for one of these to essentially enter our own galaxy, here, here comes another one from the outside, is also very, uh, relatively high, as, especially if we look at the periods of uh, billions of years and especially if we look at all of the galaxies in our vicinity. So this also implies that um, inside the intergalactic space, there's actually quite a lot of these rogue planet-like objects that are flying around that used to be star material. And these objects are still there, they have been there for millions and billions of years, and they're essentially like all over the place, moving really, really fast in between galaxies. We, of course, will not be able to see them unless they're turned into some sort of a red dwarf that we can kind of detect through its radiation, because for the most part, all of these objects will be very, 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 very dark planetary or planet-like objects that we would be unable to detect. Now, this one looks relatively bright, but in reality, they would be all super, super dark. Which, of course, means that there is quite a lot of mysteries out there in intergalactic space, and there's quite a lot for us to learn about our universe and, of course, about our own galaxy as well. And so that's the idea of these spitballs and how they're formed. And hopefully you learned something from this video, and hopefully you'll subscribe if you still haven't. If you've enjoyed this video, maybe share this with someone who enjoys watching space videos and wants to learn through video games. In the next video tomorrow, you're going to learn something else, so don't forget to come back here tomorrow and potentially maybe even support this channel on Patreon. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye-bye. And what can we do? Can we maybe, just maybe, use the explode button on our Sagittarius A star and find out what actually happens to... Oh, it just disappears. No explosion whatsoever. Well, looks like I just formed an intergalactic donut because the black hole has actually disappeared. Oh well.